Emax Magnum, F4 flight controller, Bullet 30 all in one, Bonka 5S pack. It's either gonna catch on fire or it's gonna be awesome. So it worked, nothing caught on fire, there was no weirdness, there was no oscillations. Mind you, it was only one flight, so that doesn't really speak to durability. Um, but I don't know, it felt kind of underwhelming. But you know, I'm used to flying the floss with no GoPro, and, you know, and the GoPro and the XoPro, that's gonna add like, 90 grams and then you know the five salt pack i think it weighs i don't remember how much it weighs but yeah it didn't it didn't feel super fast but then again i haven't flown five cell on the gem fan 51 52s so i don't know if maybe maybe those just aren't good 5s props i don't know mind i like I just finished flying three four cell packs without the GoPro. I was testing props and then I, you know, I switched to the GoPro, threw the five cell pack on and ripped it around for two minutes. I don't know. It worked. That's it's it's good that I didn't catch on fire. But yeah, it was it was a little underwhelming. But then again, I don't really fly a whole lot of 5S or 6S, so I don't really care. You know, the Magnum Emacs sent it over to me for for testing and for a little promo, and I wasn't I wasn't thrilled about using an all-in-one. I've, I've you know if you if you follow me on Facebook or, or what have you, you'll know that I'm like a huge proponent of using individual ESCs in the arms, and that's just because when I've gone to races, I've been in like emergency situations where I'm on the ground at a race swapping out ESCs after a crash. You know, that's any ESC, that's, you know, that's like DYS, Emacs, Akon, whatever. Um, so because of that, you know, like I, I like being able to quickly change ESCs at a race. But, you know, and I, I'm not an engineer, so I don't know what Emacs did to this, the foreign one in the Magnum. But we'll, you know, I guess we'll, we'll have to see how durable it is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to fly that quad for, for a while, you know, when I race practice or whatever. And I'll see how the ESC holds up. Cause you know, other than that, I like the concept of the Magnum. You know, like I said, I wasn't thrilled about it, but when I got it, you know, it was like super easy to build the quad. You, you take the Magnum out of the box, slap it on some bobbins and attach your motors and your camera. It takes like, you know, I'm kind of a slow builder, so it took like a half an hour. 
and I put it, I put the Magnum in two different quads in the same day. So, you know, that's two builds in one day. That's like, for me, that's unheard of. It takes, it usually takes me all day or all night to build a quad. So I like the concept of it. The VTX doesn't work with smart audio, but it does have an LED readout. So it's, it's not hard to use. It's not like you're counting blinks. You know, you just, you just push it to change the channel. You hold it to change to band and then change the band. And then you hold it longer to change between 25 and 200. So it's, it's super easy to use. It's about as easy to use as the Lewis script. Um, and you can still, you know, make pit adjustments through the Betaflight OSD. I had kind of forgotten about that until yesterday. So yeah, I really like the concept of it because I'm building so much for me and Zero that the concept of just taking all of the components out pre-attached is, I think that would be super helpful. So yeah, the Magnum's cool. I think I'm starting to dig it. It doesn't, it doesn't save a whole lot of weight. You know, bullet ESCs only weigh like two grams each. But it does look clean. And I think uh, the, the props sound different without the ESCs and the arms. People don't talk about that. You know, the floss has really skinny arms. Um, so there might be some efficiency or power gains there, maybe. I'm gonna try to upload this today because tomorrow morning, the Thrust UAV team flies out to London. We're going to the Goodwood Festival of Speed. We're gonna put on stupid Facebook. We're going to put on some booths, um, you know, displaying the Riot 250R Pro. We're going to display our RubyQ stem package with our, um, with our vendor over in the UK. Might get some racing in. It should be a full little, pretty little fun trip. Might be a lot of work involved. And then of course, you know, if you're like in the to cars and motorcycles, the Goodwood Festival of Speed is like, it's like one of the biggest car shows in the world. You know, a lot of famous drivers and racers go there, so it should be pretty crazy. I know, uh, I know my buddy Brian Magnus pretty jealous. <laughs> I told him if I see any famous F1 drivers, I'll try to give him a signature. So yeah, if you don't hear from me for a week, it's because we're in London and I have terrible internet connection. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I forgot one thing. Uh, you know, I just put out a video on motor temps and you know, how to diagnose or whatever. On 5S, it's, uh, let's see, it's 68 degrees. On 5S, uh, the 2400s, they, they were cold. They came down at, if I had to guess, I would say anywhere between 75 and 80 degrees. The left rear motor was a little warmer, but still, around 80 degrees um so that just goes to show you the importance of isolating your gyro